urban lifestyle. And I've linked up with um, Dr. Rav Naik, and together we're going to be over over a period of time, we're going to do a few of these videos talking about um, gut health and different issues that people might have um, mm -hmm. and how we can, we between us can actually help you. So the first one today is going to be um, insomnia. So how, how important is the gut health to your um, sort of sleeping patterns and stress and anxiety and all of those sort of things? I'd like to introduce you to um, Dr. Rav Naik. You have to call me Rav, is the first thing, Carolyn. I've known okay. you for so many years. I'm Rav. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm a, still a working GP. Uh, and I've known Carolyn for ages, 20, over 20 years. Um, she's asked me about four different questions there. Let's just start on insomnia. Shall I talk about insomnia first? Yeah. By the way, this isn't a lecture. This is just a chat, everyone. If anyone's yeah, taking the time to watch this. It's just yes. Yes, a very yes. straightforward chat. Okay. You may learn yes, something, yeah. you may learn nothing. You okay, so insomnia. More. Insomnia affects about 16 million people in the UK on a daily basis. Okay. A, third, a third of the adult population don't sleep properly. Okay, so I ha I've spoken to a lot of people just lately and um, with regards to insomnia, you know, um, they're either getting too well, I'm telling you something, they're getting too much sleep, lack of sleep, fragmented sleep. Um, so, you know, what's actually causing that? Well, I know there'll be lots of issues, yeah. but what is actually causing? The, the points you made there are very good, actually, Carolyn, because about uh, 60, about two thirds of the population have disrupted sleep. And I think the other figures are about 20% of people sleep less than five hours there are so many factors which affect our sleep patterns uh, humans by nature like order so we like routine mm -hmm. and in the crazy world that we live in nowadays routine seems to be going out of the window and we think we're superhuman and we think we can do anything mm -hmm. at any time we think we can work 12 hours a day and go out partying every night and wake up in the morning feeling refreshed and function perfectly. It just doesn't happen. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of reasons for it. One of the main ones is our dietary intake. People's diets aren't as good as they should be. We tend to have a lot of sugar. You know yeah, that. Yeah, that, that's a that. biggie, isn't it? That is a biggie, the sugar. It's the hidden sugar that manufacturers put in food without us knowing it. There's certain apps um, like Change for Life, which is free from um, the NHS. Just if you search in your uh, search engine, Change for Life, number four life app, download it. You can read the barcode of foods, tells you how much sugar's in. I think we drink much more caffeine than we think we do. Caffeine's in the same amount in tea as in coffee. It's in a lot of carbonated drinks. Uh, but it's habit, isn't it? We love drinking coffee. We yeah, love and you drinking find that tea. a lot of people, they'll say the first thing in the morning to get them going is they yeah. have to have a cup of coffee. What are you drinking, Ralph? Yes, tea. <laughs> mint. Mint tea. Mint tea. <laughs> Mint. Right on cue. Mint tea has no caffeine. Okay. I don't well, think. I've got water. Okay, very good. Very good. So, uh, get, getting back to the point you're making. Yeah, I, I know you people like coffee in the morning. I, I know I was talking about routine. In the old days, people, in the old days, people used to have routines about what they ate. Fish and chips on a Friday. You'd have liver and onions on a Thursday. Yeah a roast every Sunday. People had routine. Nowadays, people don't seem to have time to have routine, but it's very important in terms of our sleep well-being. So, not surprisingly, because um, there are so many people who have sleep disorders, there is actually something called, I'll just make sure I give you the correct um, web link, 
if I can find it. I'll get it later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Remind me to get. So we're doing well here. The NHS have actually got a website called uh, Everyday Mind Matters Dealing with Insomnia. Okay. Uh, which is on nhs.co.uk. Okay. Okay. And, I'll, and I'll I think anybody can get onto that, even if they're not in the UK, they can yeah. still get onto that site um, and, and look at that because there's the, still going to yeah. be some good things on there. And the other one is, I found it, sleepcouncil.org.uk. Okay. Which is a charitable organisation set up nationally to help people deal with sleep disorder. So, okay. So going back to routine, um, I think our work commitments are changing. People have now flexible work, working patterns, flexible working times. Uh, all of us seem to have more and more pressure put on us in the workplace. If you're lucky enough to have a job, whatever job you do, there's never enough hours in the day to get done all the tasks that you should have, mm -hmm. should do or feel you should do. And I think people uh, feel very responsible. They don't want to let other people down. And with regard to that, you don't switch off when you clock off from work. You take yeah, thoughts. True. We all take thoughts about work home with us. Mm -hmm. And those thoughts run through your mind, either in your, at the front of your thinking or at the back of your mind. So even when you don't think you're thinking about work, somewhere in here you probably are yeah um and that manifests itself when you're going to bed at night and you know and you lie there like these people have the fragmented sleep especially you know they go to bed tired they lie there um for two hours while rab sits there and drinks his mint tea um <laughs> not coffee mint tea but mint. um you know and they lie there then it all sort of comes to the forefront yeah, doesn't it that's right yeah and the other thing is these yeah this <clears throat> causes insomnia yeah. because you probably the last thing you do at night before you go to sleep is you check mm -hmm. if you're on i don't do social media people check mm -hmm. the social media last thing or you check your whatsapp messages or your text messages or you're reading your emails that have come through. Are you I, talking I, to somebody on the other side of the world? Or you're talking to someone <laughs> on the other side of the world, when actually you should be talking to your partner, doing natural, physical things, rather than looking at your phone. Trent, I can't, you know? Trent, Trent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rav, I can't do that. So yeah. the other thing that people do yeah. often is they'll drink caffeine late at night. We're talking about caffeine. Let's yes, keep talking about caffeine. People yeah. will have a nighttime cup of tea and then be surprised when they can't go to sleep when they want to. Because mm -hmm. tea contains caffeine. Caffeine's a stimulant. So to interrupt you, but quick question. The only because I've done it in the past and I know that um, people that I've speak to do with it. What about, like you're drinking a herbal tea now. Yeah. So what about things like, chamomile before you go to bed really good okay very, very good. good mint right, tea okay. chamomile anything that doesn't contain caffeine in the old days when we were growing up in the 1940s carolyn when we were growing I up i don't in know the what you're talking about you cheeky <laughs> devil you <laughs> they used to be you uh, been the bone in the 1940s do you remember ovaltine and horlicks I yeah, I'm don't look at me like yes that. For that one, aren't I? Of course you do. Ovaltine yeah, and Horlicks. The 1940s. No, I'm I'm kidding. Work malt, malt yeah. based, and you mix them with warm milk. Yeah. And the reason people used to have Ovaltine and Horlicks is because they help you to sleep. Warm milk yeah. and malt both induce sleep. So So what people, we should be saying to people now yeah. is bring that back yeah um i know horlicks is horlicks still around i have no idea but do you remember we used to have uh hot chocolate at night as well that power yeah. cadbury's hot chocolate at night yeah, yeah. E everyone used to do it but now yeah. no one does it 
No, but surely hot chocolate's not good for you at bedtime. Hot, too much um, sugar. Yeah, I'm saying there's sugar in that, but um, you know, I think Horlicks is still around. I'm not sure about Ovaltine, but um, yeah, you had a biscuit with it as well yeah. when you went to bed. So the other, the other simple thing people can do is take a warm bath before bedtime. Half an hour before bedtime, if you have a bath, yeah. get in a warm bath because that relaxes you. It puts you into a, into a state where you want to lie down and sleep. And um, you recommend half an hour before? About half an hour before. Right, okay. So, that, so there are really simple steps you can take. Cut back your caffeine, probably after about six o'clock at night. Have a warm, milky drink. Um, have, a, have a warm bath. And the other thing that you need to try and do is stop looking at your phone or iPad. Yes. So many people look at them in bed or they read from them and the light that they give off doesn't put your your brain into a sleep mm -hmm. or going to sleep state. It's too stimulating. Yeah. Read a book. I've actually read about that. Yes, yes, that's true. Um, what about exercise? I mean, obviously you don't do exercise before you go to bed, but sort of like do exercise early evening, then have your warm bath, yep. then have your Horlicks. Yeah, fantastic. Really to have. Yeah, really good. Yeah. While we're talking about sleep, there's a really fantastic book by a professor of sleep studies mm -hmm. called Colin Espy. Again, on, bear it, with me while I just check this. This is, <laughs> as I said, it's not a lecture. It's not rehearsed. This is no, real no. life, everyone. Hey, we're doing good. So his book, he is Professor Colin Espy, spelt E-S-P-I-E, -E. and his book is called Overcoming Insomnia and Sleep Problems. And like everything in the whole world, it is available on the Amazon. Okay. So if you've got sleep problems and you're watching this, mm -hmm. order it, it'll be with you tomorrow. It, it's a, a self-help guide and it, it's a really well-written, clear, easy to understand book. Mm -hmm. I thoroughly recommend it. I recommend it to my uh, patients in the practice. Okay, I will, um, when I've posted this, I'll pop a link on yeah. as well, so people can actually go and order that okay. if they wanted to. Another good thing um, that is, is some mindfulness techniques. Yeah. You know, before, if, you know, if they're lying in bed and they, they feel they can't sleep, it's to do some nice, deep breathing, nice, mm -hmm. slow breathing. That's a good one. Do you, would you recommend that as well? Definitely makes a difference. If you remember, yeah. again, in the old days, people used to count sheep jumping <laughs> over a gate. Because it puts yeah. your mind, it puts your brain into a different state. Mm -hmm. You're just picturing one repetitive thing, which mm -hmm. makes everything else switch off. In a, in a way, that simple technique, it's self-hypnosis. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Nowadays, we'd call it mindfulness. In yeah. the old days, people used to say, count sheep jumping over a fence. Yeah. So it's just the old things that are coming back. but We, we have to reinvent way. stuff because we're modern. Yeah. But actually, yeah. the old stuff works really quite well. Yeah. Um, and what about listening to music before? while you know while you're trying to go to sleep i mean i personally i'm not a whale I'm lover a, i'm not a whale no. lover or a dolphin lover or the chirpy birds <laughs> what about the pan what about the pan pipes <laughs> i wouldn't listen to acdc but maybe the no, pan pipes <laughs> uh, no but no going back to what i was saying is you know for me i mean i've just come back um and, I, and obviously jet lagged i've just come back from a, a long a 10 hour 11 hour flight yeah. jet lagged um and where to have you sleep been? If I, where have you where been, have I been yeah oh you don't know tell, you us, don't tell us where you've been. Been. been i have been people want to know come on tell us phoenix then on a cruise a caribbean cruise around about five or six caribbean islands then to kansas or kansas yeah. city then back to phoenix and then back here to you lovely people wow 
You have to change your name to Dorothy. Have you got some red shoes that you click your heels? I actually have got some red shoes. <laughs> Wizard of Oz. Take Wizard me back Oz. to Kansas. No, take me back to Phoenix. Okay. <laughs> There's a reason. Right. Sorry, I interrupted you. Moving right, on. I've forgotten, I've forgotten where I am now, what I was actually saying. And that might be something to do with the fact that I'm Okay, we're, we're talking about music and sounds. Yes. Yep. Go on. So, so, you know, I would, so, so coming back from, say, a 10, 11 hour flight, as I've got older, I find that ideal, and don't be laughing at me, <laughs> I feel that I, well, I do, I struggle with jet lag. And the thing is, is to help me get to sleep, if I put some music on, and it doesn't have to be whale music or dolphin music or pan pipes or anything like that, but just some nice, relaxing, gentle music. It might be a favourite artist, or like not AC, not AC, ACDC or the Stones or anything yeah. like that, but something nice and gentle. And I sometimes find that that will just help me sort of drift off into sleep. You're, you're absolutely right. Looking at all the travel you've done and looking at the state of the world, no, no, I, Gre I Greta would be frowning at you. And I hope you've paid your carbon credits. Now let's let's move on. You have okay. bought some carbon credits for your travel, haven't you? Okay, you're let's a good move person. On. <laughs> let, let's move on. Right. So music is music. Music is one thing, Carolyn. The other yeah. thing is scents, smells. Okay. And certain smells do theoretically send us into a, a state of sleep. Because in the old days, they used to put lavender on pillows yes. because the smell of lavender puts mm -hmm. your brain into yeah. a different state. Again, one of the old things that has been used. Yeah, I'm going to interrupt you again here because me being in, me being, um, in the industry I'm in, we do use a lot of essential oils. Yeah. And I, I do a lot of hands-on massage as well. Yeah. Um, to help with stress and anxiety yeah. and all that sort of mm -hmm. stuff, and I do do you I do use lavender on yeah. a lot of my clients. Mm -hmm. But for me personally, you know, it works for, the, for me. I'm allergic to it. Okay. Just the just the smell. So mm -hmm. even though you're saying that, yeah, you know, I think I think people have got to be careful. Just sticking it on the pillow or something. I think they just got to be really oh, yeah. wary. I, 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 yeah. Absolutely, but there are there are other scents. If you go into a spa, quite often you'll set the smell of eucalyptus or tea tree. There are yeah. common scents. Scents when you walk into somewhere like yeah. a therapy center or a spa, which yeah. put you into a frame of mind where you know mm -hmm. you are going to relax. Yeah, and I think that again, you know. Um, you now get rather than putting it on your pillows and things like that. Yeah. You can get diffusers. I yeah. actually have a diffuser in my yeah, room. Absolutely. So yeah. I will put that on as soon as I get into yeah. work. So yeah. you know they are breathing that scent in, yeah. or that aroma as they come in into yeah. the treatment room. But it just shows yeah. how many different things actually work on our mind and the way that we behave and react. Yeah. Now I know that. At the beginning of this talk about three hours ago, you said you wanted to talk about <laughs> about the microbiome, the microbiome and its importance in sleep. So oh. can I just say for people that don't know, the microbiome, when we're talking about gut health and then we talk about microbiome, it's the same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, because people got... will go, well, what's microbiome? Yeah, so it's nothing, it's about the, the health of your gut. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's so important is because your gut actually produces, helps produce a sleep hormone called serotonin. Incredibly important for sleep. But when your behavior and your lifestyle are disrupted, your gut bacteria influence your gut health and those important chemicals that are manufactured in your gut aren't manufactured because you've got the wrong mix of, of microbiome. You've got the wrong mix of bacteria, viruses, fungi living in your bowel. Because what we now know is that those are 
essentially important to all aspects of our well-being. So if you're stressed, if you're anxious, one of the first things that goes is the routine of eating normally. You grab quick food that you can pick up on the go, eat while you're traveling, put a stick in the microwave when you get home. Those aren't the sorts of foods that help your gut health. Yeah. So what sort of um, foods would you sort of suggest that people should be eating to help improve their gut health so they can begin to start putting these things into place? I think one of the first things you need to do really, Carol, is you need to find out how much sugar you're consuming. Yeah, so again, I'll, I'll say get that change, the number four life app from uh, the website, download it onto your phone. It's got a scanner. If you uh, scan the barcode of most foods in any supermarket, it will tell you mm -hmm. and it will shock you how much sugar is in. So try and reduce yeah. your sugar intake. Uh, the other thing you should do is try and eat a bit more fiber. Um, fibers easily found. If you do searches on the BBC website, it tells you how to get your 30 grams a day of fiber. It really is quite easy. Try and eat some more fresh veg. Uh, try and eat things like broccoli, kale, cauliflower, you know, green leaf veg. Try not to eat processed and pre prepared pre-prepared foods mm -hmm. it's time consuming cooking at home but there are companies like gusto who will deliver to your house uh, fresh food a full list of ingredients and a menu for you to cook really healthy food it with between in between 10 and 20 minutes mm -hmm. uh, they do meals for one meals for two you know you the meal portion size is exact, so you're not at the end of a week chucking stuff away from your fridge. Mm. If it says you need half an onion for a, for a recipe, they will supply half yeah. an onion. They are very good, yeah. So it's a much more cost-efficient, effective way of getting fresh, healthy food delivered to your door and really simple, easy-to-follow menus. Mm -hmm. um, if you do go supermarket shopping, if you can get into a supermarket at the moment to buy anything other than toilet roll, try and buy... Well, can I just say, because if somebody looks at this six months down the line, oh, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're in March 2020, by the way. Yeah, and we are, we are in... We're in lockdown. In Everyone's in lockdown. Yeah. yeah. So, Sorry. And just to let you know, it's just come through on a tweet that um, Boris Johnson's got coronavirus. <laughs> Yeah, but only mildly. I've just seen his... Oh, it's uh, only mildly. He's, he's so. going to be fine. Don't panic anyone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so fresh foods. The other really, really important thing for your uh, gut health is fermented foods. Mm -hmm. We aren't very good at eating fermented foods. Probably the only one that most people would know about, the majority of people, is live yogurt. But there are things like kefir, which is a version of... A fermented milk, kimchi, which is a Korean fermented vegetable dish. Most people have heard of sauerkraut, which is the German uh, fermented cabbage. A lot of people have never had any of those foods. There's also things like kombucha, which is the fermented tea, uh, again from the Far East. All of these foods are really easy to prepare and make at home yourself. Then you know exactly what's gone in them. There's no additives, no emulsifier, no stabilizer, nothing that's going to let them sit on a supermarket shelf for a year or whatever the sell by date is. You make them yourself, you have control over production. If you have a little bit every day, it makes a massive impact on your gut health. And importantly, at this time, will improve your immune system. Which, as you say, at this time, it, it, I mean, it's important anyway, because the immune system has to deal with everything yeah. that's going on, mm -hmm. isn't it? But at this moment in time, with COVID-19 going on, I think um, it's imperative that we do take care of our gut yeah. health and our immune, our immune system. Um, the one thing that you did miss out right there is people cut down on your caffeine. 
cut down on your caffeine. Didn't we say that earlier? You said that earlier, but when you were going I'll through the again, it. you missed it out. Cut down on your caffeine. Sugar and caffeine, those are your two big ones. Yeah? They are. Get more Abs fibre. Absolutely. And there are um, some companies out there, Carolyn will probably talk to you about it in a later uh, YouTube or live video. There are certain companies that do health supplements, which mm -hmm. definitely help the gut microbiome. They yeah. have targeted this very niche market. It's the only space that they're really active in. Uh, this isn't probably the time to talk about it, but they are out there. And mm -hmm. Carolyn will fill you in, as they say. So really yeah. simple steps. Uh, cut back on your phone usage just before yeah. bed. Probably don't have any caffeine after about six o'clock at night. Try and establish a bedtime routine where you're not getting too stressed or over anxious. You're not thinking about work. Uh, have Horlicks or Ovaltine if they're still around or just some warm milk. Yeah. If you're lucky enough to have a bath and you just don't have showers, have a bath, warm bath about half an hour before bed um, and cuddle up to someone in bed. That really helps you to sleep eventually. And if you haven't got somebody to cuddle up to in bed, get a teddy or get a dog. Exactly. Good one. <laughs> I'll cuddle up to your children, but at this time you can't because you can't cuddle up to anybody. You can't. You're not like, well, I think you're still allowed to. to uh, so once again, those books, <laughs> Over, Overcoming Insomnia and Sleep Problems by yes. Colin Espy and yes. the sleepcouncil.org website. Yeah. Okay. NHS.uk. Um, but remember, if you have insomnia, you're not alone. 16 million other people will not be sleeping with you every night. Okay, that's interesting. So you can all get on your phones and talk to each other. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Good one. So, <laughs> okay. Well. Thank you for that. And with regards to um, just sort of just going over what you've just said quickly, um, you know, it is about um, getting into a routine. It is about cutting out your sugar, eating more fiber, cutting down on your caffeine, getting into a routine uh, before bedtime, all that sort of thing. But and eating a healthier, balanced diet. But I also think, you know, if we struggle with that there are like you were saying there are supplements out there that can help but please 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 be careful where you go to and there is a great company out there that are doing some fabulous supplements that are um linked with brilliant scientists and brilliant doctors and everything else so i will at some point talk to you all about that and um, what I will do is at the end of this, I will pop a link where you can go and have a, a look at some of those supplements that are available to help you alongside your well-balanced um, diet. So thank you, um, Rav. I'll leave oh, you with you two, two thoughts. If you, can, you should always call me Rav. I, I, don't like, I don't like the first bit. Just call me Rav. I two do when points. I'm here. Two, two points I must leave you with. Stay at home, wash your hands. Really yeah. easy. But again, I hope eventually, if you're looking at this... I hope eventually we're allowed to leave home. I have to leave home every day to go to work, obviously, yeah. still. <laughs> the washing hands thing, I think, is going to be with us forever. I don't think I that message will ever stop. And it's yeah. a great habit for us all, each and every one of us, to get into. Yeah, and I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. And you as, a, you as a doctor when you're working, me as a health and well-being yeah. therapist, practitioner, wherever they, they call me these days, um, you know, it's important that we do wash our hands regularly in between clients, patients, yeah. whatever else. But I think that's not just for people that do what you do, what I do. Mm -hmm. It is something that everybody, every single person should be doing more regularly than they do. Agreed. Well then, Karen, I really enjoyed that. We should do this again sometime. Yes, we will very, very soon. So thank you. Bye, and, everyone. Um, we'll, we'll see you on our next session of The Rav and Carolyn Show. That's what we're going to call it. <laughs> That's, That's the name we've it. been searching for. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Love it. Catch you later. Bye. Bye.